Thank you, Jack. So during this, during today, I want to talk to you and give you as much information as possible on top of what you have available on our website and competition brochure to give you the best possible experience of going through this application process. So that's the key thing I'm going to do. If you're going to go through some slides with some key information, and I'm backed up by my colleagues, Tracy and Jack. So I'm just going to ask Tracy just to quickly introduce herself and what our role is at Scottish Edge. Tracy? Good morning, everyone. Yes, I'm Tracy Ward, and my role in the Scottish Edge team is relationship manager. Um, so my role is, I suppose, two levels. One, it's a, a practical level. So for those those companies that are lucky enough to go on and win Scottish Edge, my role is to uh, help them get the money in the bank quickly by translating their application form into the contract and getting the money out the door. Um, the second level to that is trying to add value where possible. So that may be by linking you to a team in Scottish Enterprise or, you know, where there's a, a company through discussion, there's a, a, a challenge that you're facing. It's by saying, well, I know another company that's faced that. Can I introduce you to them? So we, we try to add value as much as possible, as well as the practical side of things. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, and my colleague Jack is here running things behind the scenes. And Jack, if you just want to quickly introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm Jack. Um, I oversee marketing and comms at Scottish Edge. So um, I'll be on hand to answer any questions you might have in the chat. Um, and as Kevin says, we can take some at the end as well if you want to turn on your mics. Okay. Thank you, Jack. So to run the process as smoothly as possible, Jack is going to be monitoring the chat as we go through. Now, what I'd recommend is we're happy to take questions on the chat as we go, but I would recommend that you wait until you see the content because we tend to find that the majority of the questions get answered in the content as we go. Um, because I'll start to talk about certain subjects and someone will have a question about that and pop it in. Feel free to do that, but we'll answer them all at the end. Uh, we've got plenty of time. We should get through the content of the slides in about 60 minutes max, which will leave us plenty of time for chat questions and open mic questions as well. So during the session, uh, I'd respect if you could just keep your, you can have your video on if you like, absolutely fine. But if everyone could just stay on mute uh, and then we will catch up with all the questions at the end. Okay, so Trace is going to back me up as well. Trace is going to be taking some notes for me and Jack is going to be monitoring the chat um, just to make sure that we capture everyone's questions. So hopefully no one goes away from this session with any unanswered questions. That's the goal of today. So if you bear with me just one second, I'm just going to share my screen and get some slides ready for you guys. Now, Jack, can you just double check that's showing okay on the screen for me, please? Yep, all good. Thank you, Jack. Okay, um, so let's get cracking. Uh, your time is as precious as everyone else's, so we want to get through this as cleanly as possible and give you all the information you could possibly need to come into this round of uh, Scottish Edge. So I'm hoping a lot of you have done a bit of research on Scottish Edge, you've looked online, you've looked at all the content we've got there. This is to add on on top of that and just give you a wee bit more detail. Um, you've given up your time today, so I want to make sure that we give you as much information as possible. So today, this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about Scottish Edge what we are and why we're here. So why does it exist? I'm going to give you a little bit more detail about that. If you've never came across Scottish Edge before, I'll just explain the history of it very, very briefly and why we're here and what we've achieved so far. If you have been through Scottish Edge before, there may well have been a couple of tweaks and changes since your last application, and you may well be coming along to this just to make sure that you've got the latest information, and I'll give you that as well. Today, I also want to talk about our different competition categories. So. I'll explain what I mean by that in, in very simple form. When you come into the, the process, there's different sections of the competition you can apply for depending on the stage of your business. So I'll talk to you through each of those categories. I'll also talk you through the key dates of the competition, uh, which is important because if you know the key dates and where the key milestones are for the whole competition process, then you're well informed as to what you might need to do as an applicant to make sure you give yourself the best possible chance in this competition. I'll then talk to you about the actual application process itself. So once you've submitted your form, what happens to it after that point and where you go in the process in terms of success rate. We'll also give you some hints and tips around the uh, three minutes to make a difference. So your pitch uh, video, okay? Really, a really important part of the pitch process. And some people, when I talk to people about this, they think, oh my God, I hate myself on camera. 
we get that we totally understand that but the pitch video is really important for an assessment panel to connect with the human they want to see the face behind this and we'll give you lots of hints and tips around you know how do you create that video how do you get that message across we'll give you lots of information on that but to put your mind at rest around a pitch video if you've never done one we're not looking for a spielberg production we just want people to connect with people and we'll give you lots of information on that We'll then talk about the assessment process. So what do the assessors actually do with your application uh, as they go through? How do they score it? And how do they come to conclusion of who progresses and who does not? We'll also talk about some top tips around, you know, making sure you submit the greatest application you possibly can. And we'll also talk about uh, some top tips on delivering your video presentation. So um, I've been with Scottish Edge for five years now. Jack, I think, has been here seven, six, seven years We've seen a lot of pitch videos, we've seen a lot of applications, uh, and Tracy's been with Scottish Edge now about eight, eight months. So we've all experienced of great applications, we've all got experience of, you know, applications that could have done better. I've got experience of great videos. So we're happy to share as much as we can, and we've pulled all this into these slides um, to give you every opportunity possible. And then, as I said, at the end of the, the kind of content, we'll cover questions. So, as I said, feel free if you want to put questions in the chat as you go we'll pick them up at the end of the content and then we'll go through the questions on the chat and then we'll do an open mic session so if there's anything that hasn't been covered we're more than happy to stay on and make sure we cover everyone's questions okay so no one leaves here without an, an answer question okay so what is scottish edge and why does it exist so scottish edge has been in existence for almost 10 years now and it was an initiative set up initially by scottish enterprise there was clearly a need recognised at this time, 10 years ago, when there was very early stage innovators who were struggling to get early stage funding to maybe take their product to proof concept, develop an MVP, get to the first customer. At that time in Scotland, there was a gap in the market for early stage funding. So Scottish Enterprise worked with key partners and come up with this model to do a funding competition where innovators would come and apply to this new Scottish Edge and they could win up to a £50,000 grant to go ahead and start developing their MVP. This model grew and grew. And then after about a year at Scottish Enterprise, it started to get so big that the, the, the decision was made to spin it out into its own social enterprise company. Scottish Edge, if you don't know, is a community interest company. So we're an asset locked social enterprise. Everything we do as a team is for the benefit of the Scottish community. OK, so we're a community interest company and that's how it's been founded. Um, so Scottish Edge CIC was then set up. And as the years have progressed, the model has changed slightly over the years. It's become bigger and bigger. The needs of entrepreneurs have changed over the years, depending on the, the business landscape, depending on the financial landscape and investment landscape. So we're constantly looking to develop the model to make sure we stay in line with entrepreneurial needs. Um, and we have developed that model over many, many years. And I'll talk to you about the funding mechanism as it is when we get to that content. But we can't do this alone. We are backed up by many, many, many great supporters. I've headlined some of the kind of key supporters. So Royal Bank of Scotland, uh, they support us with funding um, to make sure we can continue with their uh, revolving loan fund for the loan element of the Edge Awards, which we'll talk about later. Hunter Foundation have been with us from the start also, and they support us with our ongoing running costs. Scotland Can Do have been a major supporter for us in terms of funding. Scottish Enterprise are a massive supporter of ours as well, um, as well as they do funding for certain things like um, Young Edge. Um, but we've also got support from Highlands and Islands Enterprise, South of Scotland Enterprise. There's lots of different partners that we cannot operate this competition without, because it's not just about the competition itself, is what happens after the competition. How do we get support for our winners to give them every possible opportunity to grow their business and be successful? And we cannot do that without the business support network. A lot of the feedback I get from winners <clears throat> is, is very much not about, not just about the cash, not about the money coming to edge. It's about that process you go through. It's about that scrutiny of your business. And then when you secure funding, it's the connections we can possibly make because we've built these partnerships over 10 years. We just want to make sure that everyone gets every opportunity to succeed. So why Scottish Edge? Um, so we are open for all sectors. Um, it was very much back in the day, 
there was there wasn't a sector agnostic kind of process for innovators. Everyone was kind of streamlined down a certain sector. We've created it sector agnostic. So we're open to every idea at every stage and we'll give everyone a fair assessment. One of the key USPs that Scottish Edge has is that feedback, support and network. So feedback, everyone who comes into this competition and submits an application video will get feedback from four independent assessors. And that is one of the key things of our competition. To get that independent review of your application and get that constructive feedback and that supportive feedback so you can then potentially go away, work on it if you weren't successful and then come back in a future date because you can apply to Scottish Edge as many times as you like. So that feedback during the, the application process is always seen as invaluable. And we've got anecdotal evidence from applicants that tell us that that feedback process is absolutely cru crucial. We give support through the application process. So whether it be a relationship management team, whether it be myself, whether it be the rest of the Scottish Edge team, whether it be workshops that we do, whether it be uh, partner organisations that support, there's a whole raft of support to help you succeed in the application process and hopefully succeed in your business going forward. And then there's a network that Scottish Edge has built up over 10 years. So if you can get through the process of securing funding, then we can open up our network to make sure that you've got all the tools and techniques and experience that you will need to grow your business. So this is not just a funding competition. This is a whole gateway to support for your business. And the final thing is, we are flexible funders. We've had to become a model for certain categories, which I'll explain later, that have a loan element. But we're very, very flexible. We're not bankers. We're a business support mechanism. So we're here to make sure businesses succeed. So we're very, very flexible when it comes to the funding. Uh, and we're not going to be, you know, we, we don't kick down people's doors to get money in. You know, we're very, very flexible. And we work very, very closely with a lot of clients to make sure their businesses will succeed. And one of the most challenging times we had around that was during COVID lockdown, where we had multiple clients of ours who were trading businesses, who had loans with us, and they contacted us to say their re revenue streams had been turned off overnight. We took immediate action. We supported those businesses. And I think that the stat is like 90% of the businesses survived during COVID because we were one of the people who stepped in and supported that business. Lots of other people did as well, but it helped to keep the business going through COVID lockdowns. And when lockdown lifted, they reopened and we got them back on track. So that's what I mean by flexible funders. But don't worry about that in a moment. We'll cover more about the funding when we get to that section. So what have we achieved so far? Um, so we have completed 21 rounds over a 10-year period. And over that time, we've had over 5,000 applications, uh, which is a lot of pitch videos. Um, we have supported 569 businesses so far, uh, who uh, we've awarded 23 million uh, in funding over that time. Uh, and the winners have covered all corners of Scotland and all sectors. So everyone from the Highlands and Islands to Orkney to the Borders, we, we try and reach out to as many communities, to many support agencies as we possibly can to make sure that the best entrepreneurial talent knows about Scottish Edge and feels supported when they come into our competition. So this is, regardless of where you're from, this is not a Glasgow-Edinburgh competition, this is a Scottish competition because we know the difference it can make to funding, for example, a distillery in North Uist where you know every single job has a multiple effect on the community much more than it would do maybe in a big city. So we're acutely aware of the intricacies and the challenges of community life and community jobs and, and the difference that really makes. So we always make sure that we keep this as far and wide as possible. This is for the benefit of Scotland, Scotland Scottish entrepreneurs, Scottish businesses and the Scottish economy. And as you can see in the corner there, if anyone recognises uh, the picture, um, if anyone in lockdown bought an uni pizza oven, uh, as I, I almost did myself. Um, <clears throat> so these uh, two winners from very early stages in Scottish Edge, um, this Doreen and Christian from uni, uni pizza ovens, they were a very, very early stage Edge winner. Now, if you've ever followed that business, that's going on to be a multi-million pound massive business. Um, and they benefited through lockdown, but they have continued to grow because they've innovated, they've added new products, new services, and they've continued to grow post lockdown. So Uni Pizza Oven is just one of the previously funded Scottish Edge winners that we wanted to highlight. Okay, so eligibility. 
uh, it's really important to understand, okay, who is eligible to come into this competition and who is not. So I'm going to go through this a little bit verbatim, but these are important points that we need to cover off at this stage. So who can apply? So for Scottish Edge, um, must be a registered business entity, so a limited uh, company, social enterprise, community interest company, or a charity. Okay, so that's for the Scottish Edge, main edge category of the awards. And that tends to be the ones who are applying for, you know, anywhere between 50 and 100,000 pounds, the bigger awards. Social enterprise edge must be an asset locked social enterprise. Now, what I mean by that is that the assets of the company can only be used for community good. So they can't be, you know, assigned, they can't be benefiting anyone else. Um, so that community aspect is very much what we're trying to achieve with the Social Enterprise Edge Award. And that can be up to £75,000 of funding, which we'll cover later in a bit more detail. And then we've got the very popular Young Edge and Wildcard uh, Awards. Young Edge and Wildcard, uh, you can secure up to £10,000 of a grant. And there's one winner of each category that will secure £15,000. So a top winner will be, will be selected by the judges to secure a £15,000. So Young Edge is for entrepreneurs 30 years and younger of age. And Wildcard is very much about an early stage innovation, pre-trading, early stage idea, looking for £10,000 to develop an MVP or test a market or you know, go to a customer segment, do some focus groups. So Wildcard is very much about that very, very, very early stage. Young Edge can be an early stage trading business or again, a pre-trading business but predominantly um, championed by a young entrepreneur. Now, young and, young and Wild must be a registered entity of some kind. So that can be a limited company, social enterprise, a kick, charity, or even a sole trader or a partnership. That's okay. That's accepted for Young and Wild because there's a grant element. There's no loan element in there. It's a grant element. So we allow a sole trader uh, or a partnership to come in and apply to Young Edge and Wildcard. And when you go into the competition process, if you haven't been in through the portal yet, it will ask you to select which category of award you are applying for. And it's really important you think about it and you choose the right category for you to give you the best opportunity. So to be eligible, and this is regardless, this is covers all these categories, the standard eligibility must be pre-trading or have been trading for less than five years. Now, what I mean by trading is, if you've had a limited company for 10 years, but you only started selling trading four years ago, then you would be eligible to join a competition. So just get this distinction right. Trading doesn't mean when you, when you registered your company. Trading is about when you started you know, generating revenue, when you started selling to customers, when you started to grow and trade in your business. Um, so must be pre-trading and or trading less than five years. Really important, must be headquartered in Scotland and resident in Scotland. Now, because Scottish Edge is set up to help the Scottish economy, ideally we want to create headquarter businesses in Scotland that will go on and generate um, revenue and jobs for Scotland. Now, in the early days, you may well want to use the money to you know, bring in support from overseas, you may want to buy stuff from Europe to bring it in, whatever that looks like. In general, that's okay. You don't have to spend the money in Scotland, but the business must be headquartered here and the vision must be to grow a company in Scotland. Um, to be eligible, again, uh, current sales turnover of less than 1 million. So trading businesses are allowed to uh, apply. So less than 1 million uh, a year and or less than £500,000 investment. So if you've not raised more than 500000 you can come into the competition still. Okay. And 50% of the business ownership has to be attributed to directors actively working in the business on a day-to-day -day basis. So we want to make sure that the director, the people who are pitching for uh, the support and the, and the award, uh, and the business is set up in such a way that we have directors based in Scotland who are working on this business on a regular basis. And overall, the business must have ambitions to generate £2,000 of turnover additional over the next three years. Now, there's lots of businesses, lots of innovation that comes into Scottish Edge that have a longer time frame to revenue, and that's okay. So we do allow businesses who may be five years from revenue. A good example of that, of that is pharmaceuticals. So we do get pharmaceuticals and really, you know, even uh, rocketry. We've, we've, we have funded a rocketry, a rocket building business. 
So if the business can, if the entrepreneur can, you know, give us a business plan that shows that after five years, this business will be trading, the judges will look at that uh, fairly. So if you can show that this is a, a game-changing innovation, this is a life-changing innovation, that can be accepted by the judges also. But predominantly, we're looking for £200,000 of additional revenue over the next three years is one of the key criteria for that. Okay, so I've talked a little bit about categories. How do you go about selecting your category? Now, please forgive the messy slide. We've had lots of different variations on this and how do we actually get through this flow chart of, you know, you come into the competition and where do you go next? So I'm going to talk you through this slowly. And then get, if there's any questions on the categories, we can cover these off at the end. So when you come into the application portal, we'll ask you to select the category you want to apply to. So is that Scottish Edge? Is it Social Edge? Young Edge or Wildcard, okay? So everyone, regardless of the category, will be asked to submit an online application and a three minute pitch video, okay? And we'll talk about the application process in a second. When you've done that, everyone goes through to a first stage assessment and everyone everyone's assessment is reviewed by an independent assessment panel. And that panel is made up of four independent assessors who I am pulling in from the business network. So we've got 12 assessment days set in a diary for first stage assessments. And we have four judges on each day. Uh, so these are judges and assessors from across the business community network who have got a range of business experience. So these are independent reviews we do. We bring in people to look at your application and ass assess your application as fairly as possible. When all the applications have been assessed and the judges have decided who should go through to the next stages, if you've applied for Social Edge, Young Edge, or Wildcard, as you can see, in these three categories, you'll go from a first stage assessment straight through to a category final. At that final, you'll be asked to pitch online. Again, your three minute pitch video, but then you will face seven minutes of questions from a different assessment panel. So we'll ask you to come to the final, we'll ask you to come online, we'll ask you to do your three minute pitch, and we'll ask you to face seven minutes of Q&A from a new assessment panel of four individual assessors, okay? And then if you're successful at that, obviously you go on to be told that you've secured X amount of funding. So that's the process for Social Edge, Young Edge, and Wildcard. If you come into the, the competition and you are applying to the Scottish Edge part of the competition, so you may be looking for 100,000, 50,000, one of the bigger awards, your first stage assessment will be reviewed in exactly the same way. It will be in front of a panel of four people who will look at your application. And then if they decide they want to see more, you'll be selected to go through to a semi-final stage. Um, so again, at the semi-final stage, we will ask you to pitch for three minutes, but you could potentially face 10 minutes of Q&A. Again, this is all online. So we'll ask you to come online, we'll get you invited online. There'll be a panel of four people and they'll ask you questions about your business in a bit more detail to find out a little bit more substance behind it. And at that stage also, we'll give you the chance to submit an update form for the judges at the next stage to show what progress have you made, what has changed in your business. And we'll also ask you for a cash flow. And the reason we ask for a cash flow from this side, from the Scottish Edge side, is because anyone who's secured an award at the Scottish Edge uh, category, there will be a loan element in there. So we have a duty of care to review cash position um, to look at loan affordability, and then we will give that information to the judges. So that's a little bit of extra information we look for, but it's really important that we get that information for the judges for the next round. So should you be successful at semi-final stage, we will ask you to come to the final stage, which is a really exciting part. So if anyone's ever been to RBS Gogoburn and watched the Scottish Edge finals, we will then ask you in the final stage to get on stage uh, and pitch for three minutes and face 10 minutes of live questions from four very experienced business people in Scotland. That's the scary part, but it's also the exciting part because if you get to that stage, you're in a good shape to secure potentially life-changing amount of uh, money for your business to grow up. So if you haven't been to a Scottish Edge Awards, um, I'm sure you know someone who has. But that's the process for the um, Scottish Edge element category of the award. You come through semi-final, you go to a final, which is live on stage, 
and then you'll be told if you've been successful in securing an award from Scottish Edge. Okay. Now, I appreciate there's a lot going on in that slide. I don't like busy slides myself, but I'm hoping that's given everybody a little bit of a feel of, you know, the categories and how the process works. Just one final thing to mention. When you go through the Scottish Edge side of the competition, as you can see in the bottom left-hand side, we have special category awards. So over and above the funding, um, we've got key partners who offer uh, additional award uh, packages for these winners. So we've got Net Zero Edge, which is supplied by Zero Waste Scotland. We've got an STV Growth Award uh, by Scottish Television. We've got Circular Economy. We've got iBioIC. We've got Creative. And we've got a new one for food and drink as well. So that's just come online this round 22. So we've got Scotland Food and Drink providing additional support uh, for a, we'll get a category award for a food and drink business. So we've got these on top of that. And on the day of the assessments, the judges decide who should get these extra category awards. The extra category awards don't bring in extra money, but they bring extra partner support. And we'll talk all about that when it, when it comes to that end of the process. Uh, but these are in the process and they're well documented in our competition brochure as well. So if you want to hear more about the category awards, they're in our competition brochure. Okay, so one of the things we always <clears throat> get asked is, what's the chances of winning? Scottish Edge is a very well-established competition. Um, as I said, we've been going for 10 years. We get a lot of applications. Um, and I can honestly say over the last five years I've worked with Scottish Edge, the quality of applications just continues to go up and up and up, which is really exciting for Scotland as an economy. Uh, we're, we're seeing really good entrepreneurs, we're seeing really good applications, we're seeing really detailed business plans, really robust business plans. So it's becoming harder and harder for our assessors to choose, you know, between winners. And we have to choose because we've only got a finite amount of uh, uh, money to give out. Because in this round, we'll probably award something in the region of 1.3 million in funding across all the winning categories. So just to give you a bit of a flavour of the chances of securing an award. So based on receiving 200 applications in round 22, which is an estimation, and that's an estimation based on previous rounds. Um, so we've got so much data that we can roughly tell how many we think we're going to get in this round. So from the 200, approximately 90 will be aiming to secure the Scottish Edge category award. And that's including the specialist category awards that you talked to you about. So that's about 16%. 60% going through to uh, the Scottish Edge category. Then for the Young Edge, approximately 50 from that 200 will be eligible for Young Edge. So that's about 28%. And then for Wildcard, approximately 60 will be eligible for Wildcard. So that's about 13%. Now again, these numbers are estimations, but we're trying to give you some kind of guide as to the likelihood and the chances of getting through this very, very tough competition. And then for Social Enterprise, Approximately 10 will be eligible, but there'll be one main winner in the Social Enterprise Award. So overall, from 200 applications, around 75 will progress to the next stage, which is a 37% chance of progressing beyond the first stage. And then at the end of the process, we'll have about 40 winners. So overall, rounded up, about 20% chance of success. Now, please don't be disheartened if that seems like a low number. That's actually a high number for competitions. If you look at a lot of funding competitions in different areas, the success rate is much, much lower. So because we are well supported by the Scottish Government, the Hunter Foundation, Royal Bank of Scotland, we've created a funding model where we can give away you know, more awards to businesses that need the, the money to grow their businesses. So I'm hoping that gives you a bit of a breakdown as to you know, the, what happens in terms of your time and effort to put into this, um, what is the value for you? It's not just about the money, it's about the process you go through, the scrutiny of assessment you go through, the feedback you get, and the journey you go on with Scottish Edge. Because we tend to see a lot of our applicants, um, they'll come back again and again, and they'll strengthen every single time they come back. They'll do more work, they'll take the feedback, you know, they'll come back with a stronger application. So we always try and encourage people to, you know, if it's a not yet in this time, so if you go through the process and you're not successful, we never say it's a no. We just say it's a not yet. Here's some feedback. Why don't you work on this, develop that, speak to that person, come back in a future round, because it is a tough competition. So we're hoping these numbers and these guides just give you a little bit of a flavour of what to expect when you go through the process. 
I also wanted to give you just a few examples of some of the previous winners. So Scottish Edge, uh, in the Scottish Edge main edge category, uh, we funded recently a business called Potter Pots. Uh, £100,000 they were awarded. And Potter Pots, uh, if you've never heard of them, have created what's effectively an origami type re um, uh, plant pot made from recyclable materials. Absolutely fascinating. Um, comes flat back through your letterbox, put it together, and you've got a self-watering plant pot made from recycling materials. Brilliant stuff. So they get funded £100,000 and they're going on to grow great guns. An example of a social enterprise edge, we recently funded Social Stories Club, which is a brilliant idea. Um, so two young entrepreneurs who are promoting um, large corporates who do large packages of corporate gifting, and they are making sure that these large corporates are purchasing socially responsible products and services. So a great idea, and they've been funded £60,000. Uh, a great story from the Wildcard Award uh, is a business called Solaris Kit. Solaris Kit is, a um, again, a young entrepreneur who initially won £10,000 to develop the concept of a solar heating water pump, um, initially for swimming pools uh, for the Global South. Um, but the, the idea was so successful and the output from this solar little, it's like a pyramid of plastic, the output of hot water from that was so successful, um, Faisal came back and asked for £100,000 and he's now grow, going on to grow a business that's worth millions of pounds, really growing really fast. And these solar water pumps are being used for, um, they're being used in areas of um, poverty and deprivation and low water supply and it's really grown massively. So if Faisal came in for a £10,000 award, did a proof of concept, got lots of interest, came back for 100000 and secured the 100000 on top of that. Um, so I create a word there. And then finally for Young Edge, uh, just one example, we've had many, many awards, Conglomerate Games, a brilliant idea uh, using uh, gamification technology for uh, online software solutions for medical health. Uh, and one of the key things they're doing is around uh, supporting children uh, and different medical conditions with their gamification of uh, software technology. So they've initially secured £10,000 for Young Edge. Um, and again, they can come back in a future round to apply for the main edge category of up to £100,000. So I just wanted to give you a flavour of a few. As you can see, there's 569 to choose from, um, but that's just a flavour of a couple of our previous winners. Now, key dates for your diary, which again are on our website. Um, so as you know, the application window has opened, if you weren't aware, 12th of July and the application window will close on the 2nd of August um, at 2 p.m. sharp. Now, you might look at that and think, that's not a lot of time to do this application. Um, it's a three-week window. And the reason why we've chosen to do that is based on feedback we've had from previous rounds. We want to make sure that because the Scottish Edge process is um, a long process from when you submit your application to when you potentially get your money, we're trying to make it as short as possible. And what we have found in the past is when we did a six week window for application, uh, I've always found that if you give humans time, they will fill it. What I mean by that is they will leave it to the last minute, leave it to the last week, and then they'll submit their application form. Well, just do the same for a three week window. You know, just get onto it, get it done, focus your mind, get the application form in. We did that last round. We did a three week window last round, and we had no drop off in applications. Um, so it can be done. Um, because if we made it a 12-week window, uh, we'd still see a spike in the last week of applications. So we're making a three-week window with the sole purpose of making sure that the people who come into the competition are seen fairly and fast, and the businesses who win get access to their funding as soon as possible. So there's a reason for it. Now, as I said, 2nd of August, application window closes at 2 p.m. Uh, we cannot accept any applications after that point. Um, and what we do see is on the morning of the second, we all of a sudden see lots of applications being completed. That's okay. We don't mind that. But give yourself time. <clears throat> if you come across a problem, if you can't upload your video or there's something going wrong with your laptop, we recommend you give yourself a few days. My advice is always to be, when you've finished your application and you're happy with it, submit it. If you leave it opened on draft, 
you're constantly going to tinker. You're potentially going to go back and tweak things and change things. And you may well lose the narrative and the story that you actually set to tell. So the more times you edit your application, the more likely you are to draw the attention away from the core focus or the core message you wanted to get. So my advice would be when you've done your application and you're 100% happy, submit and just let it go. Don't leave it up to 2 p.m. on a second. It'll just cause you stress. We always make sure we try and get everyone over the line uh, to make sure that if anything happens, we will contact everybody to say, there's a bit of an issue here, but there's no guarantee we can get it all done uh, for that 2 p.m. slot. Always recommend get your application form in as soon as it's ready. So after the 2nd of August, everyone will go through that first stage assessment process. And it's by the 13th of September, we'll get the results out. Everyone will get to hear if they've been successful to go through to the next stage and get to hear if they've been unsuccessful and they'll get quality feedback from the assessment panel. The next key dates, if you come in for a wildcard award, 28th September is that final online for wildcard edge. And the 2nd or 3rd of October are two days of Young Edge finalists. So there'll be 12, excuse me, uh, 12 uh, finalists in each day uh, on the 2nd and 3rd of October for the Young Edge category. For the Scottish Edge category, the semi-finals will take place 23, 24 and 25th of October. Okay. And then for the Social Enterprise final, that's the 5th of October. And then for the Scottish Edge final, we have to stand on stage 22nd and 23rd of November. So again, that might look like a lot of months in between July and November, but we do run a very detailed competition process and we are looking at ways to streamline this to make sure that, you know, we cut this down as quickly as possible so the money that we award gets out to businesses as quickly as possible to grow their business. So when you're ready to apply, if you haven't looked at this yet, everything you need to apply is on the Scottish Edge website. Right on the home page, round 22 application, apply now. So click through. When you click through, you'll be asked to register if you haven't registered already. Very simple process, so basic details are gathered, and then you'll apply to register for Scottish Edge. When you go into the application process itself, uh, we've took a lot of time and feedback on this to actually make this process as simple as possible. Um, so first of all, there is a downloadable Word document <clears throat> available on our website, which allows you to download this Word document, complete your application offline, and then upload, copy that information across into the actual online portal. Or you can go into the portal itself and you can just complete it online, whatever works best for you. But the Word document allows you to do it at your own pace offline and just carry on completing all the questions. When you go in, there's guidance on how to apply. There's lots of information uh, on how to apply in there as well. You can review your application before you submit it. And then you go into the application questions itself. So they're broken into different categories, as you can see. They have a section on funding questions. There's a section on value proposition. There's a section on team. And when you start that section, um, it will still go orange. So utilization of funding, as you can see in here, has went orange because you've started that section. And the funding section on this screen has gone green because you completed that and you've ticked the box to say, I've answered the funding questions. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when you're ready to submit, you should see all those panels there and the application questions are green. If there's anything that's not green, go back and double check. There's something you've missed, something you haven't ticked. We ask you to have, upload your video link at this point as well. And again, I'm going to talk about the video uh, in a wee second. But when, when you get your video link ready, we'll ask you to submit it in here. And if there is a password, submit the password. We recommend that you don't put a password uh, if possible. But if you have IP that you wish to protect, then you may want to put a password in there. But the password process just makes it a little bit trickier for the judging process. If you're happy that the, the video itself is only going to be shared with our Scottish Edge judges who are all under confidentiality agreements, then we'd ask you to put the video link in there as well. Really important that you have to have a three minute pitch video to go along with your application. Because as I said at the start, people buy people. And that's where the value gets added from that three minute pitch video. Then we'll ask you to verify all your answers and click to submit. Okay. So the questions themselves, I'm going to give a quick run through of this. 
So when you go in, you select your category, you select the amount you are applying for. <clears throat> um, you'll go through these different sections. So we'll ask about value proposition. And again, we have worked really hard on this to give you as many questions as possible within that subheading to make sure that we are gathering the right information and we're gathering the right information for the judges. So for example, last one, brief, brief description of your value proposition. Uh, well, what is a product or offering, competitive landscape, point of difference? All these questions are in there for you to answer. We'll ask about your team. We'll ask about the impact you make or you hope to make. What I mean by that is when it comes to social impact and environmental impact, we are very aware that as an early stage business, it may well be the case that you're not in a position to have an environmental impact immediately, but you intend to have an environmental or social impact in the future. And it's really important that you talk about how you intend to do that in the future. Okay. Um, that just helps the judges understand, you know, is this entrepreneur, does this entrepreneur have social impact and environmental impact, you know, woven into the threads of their business proposition? And whilst we don't expect a lot of impact in the early years, but it's something that the entrepreneur is thinking about in terms of how that business is going to make a difference now or in the future. Um, customer focus, who are your customers? If you're pre-trading, uh, who have you spoken to? Have you validated your product? But customer validation is one of the, the key areas that entrepreneurs uh, and applicants in Scottish Edge tend to fall down on, customer validation. So make sure you've got a good, strong customer focus. Business growth potential, again, all these questions are in there. We'll ask you to put in a three-year uh, financial projection. And then importantly, how are you going to use the funding? What do you need the funding for? And how is that going to make a difference to your business? There is an attachments section uh, for uh, anything you'd like to upload. Um, now, that's really for product visuals only, but in my experience, um, if you have a product that you want to showcase, the three-minute pitch video is a place to do that, not an attachment or an application form. So I'd recommend that if you want to showcase a product um, or a service like an app, then how do you build that in potentially to, you know, you can do a screenshot or a customer journey on your three-minute pitch video to show the judges that in real time. But it is there for you if you want to use the attachment section. Um, and then add the video link and then click and submit from there. So I'm going to quickly talk you through the three-minute pitch video because this tends to be the area that a lot of people ask a lot of questions on. <clears throat> so again, the reason why we do it is we want to see the person behind the, the proposal. Okay. Now, again, we're not looking for Spielberg Productions. You don't have to hire a crew for this. You can do it on your phone. You can do it in an office, you can do whatever you want to do, wherever you're comfortable. You can be as creative as you like, but keep the fundamentals in place. The pitch video is um, the foundations of the business application. So foundations of your edge application. So it's the headlines from the application uh, and then the headline, the application itself puts more meat on the bones of what the video means because nine times out of 10, a judge will watch your video for the first time and then read the application. So they watch the three minutes to get a flavour of what is this? Who is this person? Why are they doing it? Then they'll read the application and then they'll get all the details and then they'll start to make the assessments. So we put together a bit of a pitch structure um, to help businesses understand if you've never done it before, how do you talk about your business in a structured way that uh, a business assessor will understand what you're trying to achieve? <clears throat> Excuse me. So this pitch structure we put together is not the only pitch structure you can get. There's lots of different variations, but this is one we tend to find works really, really well for our competition and our judge. So three minutes to make a difference. How do you add value with this introduction? This is the first time that the assessor's seen this business kind of online. So it's the video. They get to see the entrepreneur. Um, so how are you going to talk about your business for the first time? You want to do an introduction or a hook. So introduce your business with some captivating information. So whether it's a societal problem you're solving, whether it's a, um, a personal story, a shock statistic, whatever way you want to introduce it, try and make it something that's compelling um, to keep the judge's attention, to gather the, the, the judge's attention from the start. You want to talk about the problem you're solving. Um, the majority of businesses, if not all, are solving a problem of some kind. How, why have you identified that problem? Is it a big enough problem to solve? Who have you spoken to? How have you validated this? Then your, your solution. 
So everyone's got a solution to show. That's why you're here. You want to grow this. What is your solution? What is that product or service? Uh, make sure you get it across nice and clearly. Uh, again, importantly, the market size and the revenue model. Um, you know, so how big is this customer segment? Can you generate revenue from this? How have you validated that? You might want to talk about the competition you have uh, and potential risks to your business. Really importantly, talk about the team. Who's going to deliver on this plan? What experience do they have? And moreover, what, what skills do you lack? Are you missing? And how have you identified you're going to fill those? Talk about the traction you've achieved. So what have you managed to achieve so far to date? Um, and then there's the ask at the end. Really important. You know, Today we're looking for £100,000 of Scottish Edge funding because we want to develop X, Y, and Z. You know, just finish it off that way. You don't have to do it in this order. Um, but I do recommend through personal experience, if you start off with a hook and finish with an ask, it tops and tails a three-minute pitch video really, really well. Okay. Now, I'm going to cover some hints and tips in a minute just around how to get the best out of your three-minute pitch video. But that's the structure. It's on our website as well. So you can go in there and have a look at this. There's lots of guidance online. But again, don't worry too much about this video. It's an introduction video. It's for a judge to watch this, hear your business application on a video for three minutes, get an overview, and then they will major on the application detail itself. And that's what brings the meat to the bones. So don't worry too much about the pitch video. During the assessment process, after you've done your pitch video and you've submitted your application, as I've explained a little bit, each uh, panel will be made up of four assessors from the business ecosystem. Um, we try and make sure there's an equal male-female 50-50 split, which at the moment I'm pretty much on track with that because we've got a great support. Um, the assessors will be given your application form and video to make their assessment. So they're given it two weeks in advance of your assessment day. And when we bring them back on that day, they will then come together and they'll use these six categories to score um, the, uh, the application they've seen. As a group, they will agree the six scores. So <clears throat> they'll score out of five for each, each area. So they'll look at the value proposition, they'll look at the team, they'll look at the potential impact, they'll look at customer focus, business growth, and how you want to use the money. And the judging panel will agree a score out of five for each one of these areas. So it's a maximum points uh, of 30 points. Um, nobody ever scores 30. <laughs> it's extremely rare. I don't think I've ever seen it um, because the assessors are, you know, they're quite tough when looking at these and making sure that in a tough competition, um, you know, they want to make sure they score these as accurately as possible. So the judges will then score your um, application and that will be used as part of the process to decide who goes through to the next stage. Um, and then to make, to make it clear, all our assessors sign confidentiality agreements. <clears throat> we put this in place very, very early in this competition process many years ago because people were worried about submitting applications with potentially intellectual property sensitive information. All our assessors <clears throat> have agreed and will have signed a confidentiality agreement before they get your video and before they open your application. Okay. So again, there's a little bit more detail around the val beg your pardon. The value proposition um, and the team and the impact. So these six key areas. Again, this is all on our website. But in terms of the value proposition, you know, have you articulated the product clearly? Who is in the team? What skills do they have? Again, I've just talked about it. What impact do you make or hope to make in the future? Your customer focus, how strong is your customer validation? Your business growth, you know, do you clearly articulate your business growth plan? Uh, and is it backed up by quality assumptions? And again, how are you going to use the funding? Okay. Now, that scoring mechanism, along with everything else, from the pitch video and the application, helps the judges come to strong decisions around the, get the four judges to agree, this one should go through, this one maybe not, but here's the feedback as to why not. And we'll capture all that during that process. So if you're not successful at any stage, we always capture feedback and we always make sure the applicant gets that feedback directly from the judging process. Okay, so some top tips for the application itself. Make it easy for the assessors to understand your business. Now, one of the key things we do see is don't put jargon in your application. Don't put acronyms. Just because you're an expert in your field, don't assume the assessors will be experts in your field. We do try and make sure that applications are seen by sector-specific experts where we can. 
but use language that everyone can understand. It's the easiest way to get your message across. It's the easiest way to articulate your plan. So where possible, make it as easy as possible for judges to understand what you're writing in your application and what you're saying in your pitch video. <coughs> Know the assessment criteria. So when you go through your application process, keep that assessment criteria in the back of your mind. What are they looking for? This is what they're going to score me on. <clears throat> and I've given enough information um, to articulate that and, and score well, potentially, against that assessment criteria. Um, outline your key point of difference. So what's your USP? You know, why do you stand out from the competition? Be realistic with your financial forecasting. Um, so hockey stick numbers don't impress judges um, because they just, they won't happen. Um, they'll take, everything will take twice as long and possibly cost twice as much. Um, so be realistic with your financial projections and give good, strong assumptions behind it. Really, really importantly, I'm going to go over it again, real customer engagement. You know, if you're early stage trading, if you're pre-trading, who have you spoken to? What have they said? What have you learned? Uh, what insight have you gathered? Uh, not just stats, don't just pull stats from a, a medical paper or an online paper. You know, who have you actually spoken to? Because customer validation is key for early stage businesses to go through this process. What will you spend the money on? Simply a breakdown of what you intend to use the money for and an explanation of the, how that's going to make a difference. Consider your impact intentions. Again, going back to that point, you know, if you're an early stage business, yes, you may want to make a societal or environmental impact. But at this, <clears throat> at this stage of the business, all you can do is predict what you hope to do in the future. And that's OK. Don't leave the, the assessors with lots of unanswered questions. Um, it's your job to do a quality application. There's plenty of work out in there to do that. So really focus what you're writing uh, and make the answers clear. Now, for example, if there's a text box that says use no more than 200 words, don't feel as if you've got to use 200 words. If you can say what you need to say in 100, that's absolutely fine, as long as you're getting the key information across. Sometimes people feel they need to fill the box, which leads to waffle. So don't leave the judge in a process, <clears throat> don't leave the judge in a situation where they have to go over and over and over an answer to find the answer. It's your job to communicate the answer clearly. So think about what the judge is asking, what the application form is asking, Answer the question clearly and concisely with enough detail to back up your answer. And then double check it before you submit. Sounds very simple, but take time to go over it. Make sure you haven't missed any parts of the competition. And then some last bits from me on the um, video itself. So you've wrote your pitch video for three minutes. We tend to say use no more than 450 words. And that's from experience. I've seen hundreds of pitch videos and hundreds of pitches written. And the, um, the video itself, if you speak 150 words per minute, it's a good pace where you can clearly communicate what you're trying to say that's not too fast and it's not too slow for the judges. So roughly at the moment, apart from my croaky voice, I'm speaking about 150 words per minute. So it's a clear, you know, concise, it's not too rushed, but it's getting the content across. So think about that if you want to create, a, if you want to write some wording for your script for the first time, no more than 450 words. The panel want to see an entrepreneur who's passionate, believable. So they want to see your passion for this. It's really important you think about this. Um, how do you come across as you want to make a difference? This is something you really believe in. Showcase your product or service. Don't leave the panel thinking, what is this? What does this actually do? It's your job to communicate that clearly in the valid proposition. Involve your team and possibly customers. So you might want to get a member of the team involved in a video. Um, you don't have to, you can do it all yourself. Or if you've got trading customers, if you're trading, you've got customers, you may well want to do a wee piece with a customer. That's fine, you can add that in as well. Again, just shows good validation. We don't need Hollywood quality. It's about you, your product and your business. <clears throat> That's what the judges want to see in here. Be natural and engaging. Don't use, uh, you can use auto cues if you want. You can use notes, that's fine. One tip for me, don't do, don't put up a slide deck and then hide behind it so the judge can't see your face. The judge wants to see who this person is, who these people are behind us. Um, so they want to see the team, they want to hear from the team directly. So don't use a slide deck and hide behind it. That doesn't really add a lot of value. <clears throat> so 
really important to understand that application form in your video make up the combined submission. Um, so it's no need to repeat the application wording on the video. The video is a snapshot of the business and then you can go into the application form in more detail and explain things slightly differently if you want in a bit more detail. Okay, so they both sit side by side, but they both complement each other. When you're submitting your video through the YouTube option, which again, there's lots of information on our website on how to do that. You click it as unlisted um, and give it plenty of time of uploading. So unlisted means it doesn't go out to the public. Only Scottish Edge assessors can get access to it. Uh, and again, there's a whole guide on our website to show you how to do that if you've never done anything on YouTube before. Really important. Watch your video back before you submit it. We have seen so many videos that have been submitted where the sound has been poor or the, the video is, is cut off at the wrong time or something hasn't quite worked and it's missed some key information. I once watched a video where an entrepreneur filmed it on his phone walking down a windy high street in Aberdeen and you couldn't actually hear what the person was saying. So they clearly recorded it last minute, uploaded it and didn't watch it and it added no value to the application. Uh, suffice to say, they didn't get through because that the quality of the video reflected the quality of the application form as well. So watch it back, just double check it again, not Spielberg production, but just check it, make sure it gets the key information across nice and clearly. Okay, Scottish Edge is more than just the monies I've talked about. Um, there's additional uh, applicant benefits and winner benefits as you go through. All applicants receive feedback, <clears throat> from business experts, we've talked about that. You get quality feedback, so you can think about, okay, I was successful, I'll get feedback. I wasn't successful, I still get feedback. How can I improve for next time or other competitions? Over 50% of winners have won in a second, third or fourth application at Scottish Edge. It is a tough competition, um, but it's not un unheard of for people to come in and win first time. It does happen. Um, we've got a support package for winners. Uh, provided by a host of uh, support partners, including Harper McLeod, Johnson and Michael, James Hallam, uh, and many, many other different types of support. As a winner, you get access to services from these support partners, um, and, and that's something we'll talk about when we get to the, the winner stage, uh, if, you, if you get to that point. You can also join the Edge alumni, <clears throat> so you can access to that massive network of 569 businesses have already won and all their uh, connections as well. And we do some workshops, so we do some sales workshops, and we also do some support around finances as well. And then there's a relationship management support. So there's Tracy and my colleague Maria, where they will wrap their arms around you from the start of your process after you win um, and make sure that you can get access to all the support that you need to help you be a success in your business. So when you win, that's the start of your edge journey. It's what happens after that. That's where the magic really happens. You know, getting things, getting connected to people you've never been connected to, seeing a business network in a different light and, you know, growing your business with all that support you need. And just one thing about the support I meant, went to mention earlier, um, if any of, the, uh, any of the applicants on this call, any of the attendees are from the Highlands and Islands area, um, I talked about Scottish Enterprise and the Highlands and Islands earlier, but Highlands and Islands uh, Enterprise, they actually have a support network to help you through the edge application process as well. So if any one of these businesses on here today or any of the applicants on here today sit within the Highlands and Islands Enterprise region, um, you can actually get access to support um, from Highlands and Islands themselves, uh, where if you contact them via email, they'll help you get through the application process as well. So we'll publicize that as well. I'll speak to Jack how we get that out to you. Um, but there's an email address you can contact. It's inquiries at hient.co.uk and you can you can go there if you're in the Highlands and Islands Enterprise region and you can get some specific support to take you through this application process as well. So there's lots of good people out there looking to help lots of good businesses be successful and that's what I've found in the landscape of Scotland. Everyone wants people to succeed. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing and rest my voice for a second. Uh, Jack, I'm going to come to you first, if you don't mind. Um, I've not had a chance to open a chat, but if we can just start having a look at the uh, questions. Yep. Yep. I guess so. Yeah, quite an active wee, uh, chat box there. Um, so I think we got we got most of it. This one I was in the kind of process of replying to there. Um, sorry, I've got a noisy child in the background. I'm trying to um 
real sweet that just now. Um, but uh, so someone's asking about the business ownership. So we're talking about fifty percent of uh, business ownership attributed to directly directly actively working in the business, and that's the kind of the condition. Um, but how does this apply to charities and social enterprises where this is typically not always the case? Okay, I'm happy to pick up a one-to-one -one conversation with that person just to clarify it, because if it's a little bit more complex, I'm more than happy. Um, my email address is at the beginning. It's kevin.walls at scottishedge.com. But I can talk you through that uh, in a little bit more detail because it's probably better to hear a bit more context behind that. Okay, uh, another one just come in there. Um, when must a director uh, relocate to Scotland during the work process to be eligible? Um, as long as a director can articulate a key date is when they, they plan to relocate to Scotland. Now, that might be six months, a year, but if they articulate that in their application process, the judges will then look at how that fits into the overall process. Um, we had a situation before where we had a winner who said they were going to, uh, they were going to relocate to Scotland uh, during the application window, but it transpired they didn't re relocate to Scotland at all. So it's really important that judges understand that that plan to come to Scotland to grow a business is robust uh, and there's enough information for the judges to believe that that's going to happen within that time frame and they're comfortable supporting that business. Yeah, yeah so that was all from the chat. Um, if anyone wants to, you know, come out and speak, unmute themselves, they're, they're free to do so. Yeah, please feel free to unmute or uh, probably better put your hand up on the on the icons. That might be easier if, in case we get a rash of questions in here. That may well be better because I can see, I think I can see everyone on screen. Jack, you can help me out if I don't see anyone. So if anyone wants to, oh, Katerina, we've got a hand up from Katerina Hayes. Yeah, hello. Uh, my name is Katerina. I'm a founder of uh, Naked Kimchi. Now we um develop like rebranding for naked ferments um at the beginning i um was like sole entrepreneur and then my co-founder joined but we i still have like 100 percent ownership um and we're like in the process of uh transferring uh shares because she invested in the business as well so she contributed she actually helped me to um and believed the first person who believed uh in in the business um and this is kind of we lift up and we start to work with like other businesses so it, at the beginning of application i wouldn't have i will still have 100 percent ownership and uh, do i need to how how do i need to artic articulate that um uh, you know that uh, mm, yeah this kind of so, so i would say katharina if you just put down there that the current situation is this but over a period of time, the, current, the situation will become this. So I'm, I'm going to make an assumption. You don't have to answer the question. There'll be a split of shares in there somewhere. That's okay. That will not hinder your application in any way, shape or form. Okay, thank you so much. Also, I have another question. Um, you see, like for the future, we also developing uh, blockchain technology in our uh, business, but it's not on the time of application. It's still on the test mode. And, uh, but we are... Um, like our partners who become like our board advisors also um, in, in the business who like for the technical side of things, but they not own or have any shares, um, you know, but we still kind of have this, you know, great support of building the blockchain technology for supply chain and um, uh, like quality control, uh, uh, traceability. Um, so how, like, what shall I like put just, put the, the like advisory board, um, that would be enough? Yeah, there's a section in the application called business team. And you can explain mm -hmm. that in there where you've got access to these experts who are helping you go through, you know, that that future thinking, where, where does the business go from here? And you can articulate in the business team section of your application. Okay, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, any other hands? Oh, we've got one from Natalie Johnson. Hello. Thank you. Hi, Hi, thank you so much for that. Um, my question is, my business is registered in Scotland. Um, however, the Scottish market isn't like the only market that I'm kind of going after. Like obviously the UK first as a whole and then, you know, further afield. Is that okay? You know, I know you said you want it to be registered and headquartered in Scotland. My company is registered there, but I don't plan just to build in Scotland. Okay. Uh, are you based in Scotland yourself? Um, so, yeah, my home address is in Scotland. 
Okay, so you live in you live in Scotland, then? Yes. Well, I'm kind of digital nomading, so yeah, my my home address is in Scotland, but I'm not in Scotland right now. Okay, so the purpose of Scottish Edge is to create Scottish jobs. If you can articulate in your application that you've got a Scottish company that will generate revenue that will come back into the Scottish economy yeah. and create jobs where people yeah. will be based and work in Scotland, um, that's what we're looking for. So if you can, if that's part of your story, if that's part of the business plan, then that's fine. Okay, yeah. Uh, w- sorry, just to ask, like, in terms of, because I don't foresee, like, offices or anything like that, but I do foresee hiring people in Scotland, but, you know, working remotely. Is that yeah. okay? Yes, if it creates jobs in Scotland and it creates revenue in a business where the Scottish economy benefits. Um, and again, going back to that important point of the, you know, the director being based in Scotland at some yep. point in the future, how do you articulate that in your application? Got you. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, Jack. Oh, Katrina, I think, hand up again, something else? Yes, I have. Another question. Um, so, like, we started as a naked kimchi, and now we do rebranding. But my company is still uh, registered as naked kimchi and co. And um, on, I'm not sure that we'll have enough time to actually um, transfer uh, company registration name. But it will be branding. It will be like on the naked ferments. Uh, is still okay, or do they need? Um, how how can I articulate that? Okay, that's that's fine. Um, so if your business is in a, in a process of pivoting or changing, that's okay. Just just explain in the application process again the journey you're on and the time frame you expect things to change. And the judges okay. will read that and they will take that into consideration. Yeah, thank you so much, Kieran. Thank you. No you're questions. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, I think if there's no other hands up, I think we've covered every question. Um, for that question from the start uh, regarding the social enterprise. Um, I, I didn't catch whose name that was, Jack, but um, did you get that person's name? You're on mute, Jack, sorry. Uh, yeah, is it Shufta? I'm not sure. I think, it's, I think I'm pronouncing it right. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'll take a note to pass on the person to you. Yeah, perfect. If you can do that and we can set up a call, we can answer that question specifically. Yep. Um, okay, I don't think there's any other questions. Um, Jack, is there anything I've missed at all? As I tend to ramble on, but I think I've covered <laughs> them. Nope, I don't see anything else. Um, if there's any last minutes, feel free to put your hand up, but I think that's us. Okay. Listen, everyone, thank you very much for your time. Um, thank you for sticking with it. I hope that adds value, uh, and we hope to see you all in the next round of the process. So good luck to everyone for joining. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.